Welcome back to another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to be covering part 16 of my Oak Kitchen Tabletop Guitar Build, and it's almost finished. All I have left to do is two final steps in the assembly process. One is to install some strap buttons, and then the other is to fabricate and install a truss rod cover. So let's jump in and get started. To make the truss rod cover, I'm going to use this piece of scrap Chechen. This is a very hard, dense wood. And whenever I cut my fretboard blanks, I always have some pieces left over and I'll set those aside and use them for truss rod covers and in some cases even control cavity covers if I have a piece that's big enough. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a thin piece from the end of this and that's what's going to be used to make the cover. And before I do that though, I want to sketch out the shape of the truss rod cover. And I can do this freehand because I've done this hundreds of times. So I'll just sketch out the basic shape and then I'll cut it with my bandsaw. And I'm going to cut it uh, just outside the lines that I just drew and then I'll sand it down and get the shape more precise and accurate. If you're not comfortable with your ability to freehand something like this, I would just recommend using like a vector-based drawing program on a computer. And then you could just draw half of the cover and then take that half and flip it over as a copy and you'll end up with a pattern, a template, which is perfectly symmetrical. So that will just make it easier to get uh, the shape that you want accurately. Now I'm not really too concerned with precision cutting here. I just want to kind of rough cut it since I'm going to have to sand quite a bit of it anyways. And as you can see, I've got quite a bit of sanding to do. Of course, I could just as easily sand this by hand, but the belt sander does it much faster. Even this old central machinery Harbor Freight belt sander, it, it works well. And then finally, I'll just sand it with some 220 grit and follow that up with some 400 grit. And I like to sand this back edge at a slight angle that matches the angle of the headstock. Offhand, I don't recall the exact size of the screws that I'll be using to mount the truss rod cover, but they're the same size screws that I use when I install the tuners, those tiny little screws that you uh, insert into the back. And I think those are number two screws. At any rate, the drill bit that I'm using is a 3 seconds inch bit. <laughs> Now the finish I'm going to use on this truss rod cover is my super secret Highline Guitars custom blended truss rod cover finishing oil. And this is a blend that I have worked on for many years to ensure 
the highest level of truss rod performance. Now I'll let this cure for a couple of days and it'll be ready for installation. Now you're probably thinking the next step would be to install the truss rod cover into place. However, I still need to do the final setup on this guitar. And that of course may require a minor adjustment to the truss rod. So for now, I'm gonna leave the cover off and that'll actually be the absolute last thing that I'll do on this guitar. When it comes to installing the strap buttons on a guitar, I've installed just about uh, every kind that's out there on the market. But what I've uh, kind of resorted to lately is on my spec builds, I use just these low cost, fairly generic, strap buttons and on my custom builds i'll use whatever the customer wants but if they don't specify i like the grover locking strap buttons they work pretty well uh, so for this guitar though since it really is basically a spec build i'm just going to use these simple basic generic no frills strap buttons and the idea behind that is, is it keeps the cost down. And if the customer down the road wants to upgrade to something a little fancier, all they have to do is remove this and they've got the hole already drilled and threaded for whatever strap button they want to use. So the way I'm going to install this is I'm going to position one of them back here on the center of the lower bout and then one up here center of the uh, upper horn up, uh, right up in here. So what I need to do is I need to mark it. And I've already got a line. This is a glue seam since this body blank was made from an upper half and then a lower half. So I've got that seam right there that I can mark along. And I'm just gonna come right off of between the two middle saddle adjustment screws because there's no seam here. This was all just one piece. It's a laminated piece, but it's all kind of a butcher block design. So I don't really have a center line to come off of. So I'll just come back here and then down to the glue line. And I'm just using a, a marking all here. And I'll mark it with a little bit of a divot. And then I'm going to use uh, this is about a 16th inch diameter drill bit, and I'm just going to drill a pilot hole straight back in here. And for this strap button, again, I'm just going to use that glue line on the center, and then I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I think the strap button should go. And I think we'll just pop it in right there. And when I use these strap buttons, I always add a little felt here to protect the surface of the body. It also kind of finishes it off, makes it look a little more professional. All right, guys, well, this guitar is basically finished. Uh, all the construction and assembly steps are complete. And the only thing that's left to do is the final setup. And because of how much goes into the final setup, I've decided I'm gonna devote the entire next episode to all the steps that are involved. So I encourage you to check back and uh, watch that episode once it's posted. And really all I need you to do right now is three things for me. Number one, click the thumbs up button. 
Number two, if you don't already subscribe and like watching videos on building guitars, hit that subscribe button along with the bell icon for notification every time I post up a new video. And finally, if you like what you see here and support this channel and want to kind of help out a little bit, head over to eGuitarPlants.com and purchase a plan for either a guitar or one of the tools that I make. And even if you don't build the guitar or the tools, that purchase goes a long way to helping out this channel. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.